Good evening. This week our focus is on the book Habakkuk. And right at the beginning of this book, we come to the question of how the fact that God is good and almighty can be reconciled to the fact that we experience suffering and brokenness in this world. We know very little of who Habakkuk was. It is only said that he was a prophet and that he received this prophecy from the Lord. Interestingly, the name Habakkuk means to clasp or to hold on to, to struggle with. And in his opening plea to the Lord where he cries out, How long? We hear the words of a believer who has grown weary with struggling, pleading, calling to the Lord out of his circumstances. Let's listen to this first prayer of Habakkuk in chapter 1 verses 1 to 4. How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict that abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed, and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. In all of Habakkuk struggling, he feels alone, he feels estranged from his own people, the people of Judah, amongst whom the violence has been instigated against one another. His struggle is expressed in two questions that he asks. Firstly, the question of, How long, O Lord? And secondly, the question, why? Why do you tolerate wrong? Habakkuk's struggle is related not so much to what he doesn't know, but rather it is related to what he knows about who God is. He knows that God is good and that God is almighty. And therefore he is struggling to understand how it is possible that God can just do nothing that he does not intervene, that he does not save, that he does not serve justice. The core issue is not even that God does not act, but rather that God does not even answer his prayers, the prayers of the righteous, the prayers of those who are being hemmed in by the wicked. Habakkuk is completely puzzled by his circumstances. Because he knows that it is possible for God to maintain a people for himself and that God wants to do this. But he struggles to understand how it is possible for God to maintain a people if it isn't arriving to save them. If he's doing nothing to protect them, to protect the innocent and to punish the wicked. Of course, there's great irony in Habakkuk asking how long, O Lord? Especially in the fact that he's asking it of the Lord, the one who on so many previous occasions had to ask him how long himself. Think of Exodus chapter 16, where the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? Or in Numbers 14, where the Israelites chose to Rather listen to the spies who came back from the promised land saying that the land can never be conquered because the people are too powerful. And then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me in spite of all of the miraculous signs I have performed amongst them? And even long after Habakkuk's life, when the, his disciples had too little faith to drive out the demon that was causing a young boy harm, Jesus would ask, O oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. The reason for all the suffering that is described in three words, three couplets that we find in our text, trouble and suffering, plundering and violence, strife and contentions. This is the chaos that follows when people 
abandon the justice of the Lord. And then sin and sin's consequences rules and prevails throughout the land. In these circumstances, possessing the law and doing what is right is of little value because the wicked outnumber the good. The law is paralyzed. Justice never prevails. Justice is perverted. In these circumstances, the believer can only cry out to God, How long, O Lord? Tomorrow evening, we'll get back to this. We'll get back to the answer that God gave to Habakkuk. Good evening.